remember that we too were babies at one time. We made a lot more noise than this, but we've changed. Some of the change was unintentional, some of it was intentional. But that's an underlying assumption we have as we practice, that we can change. There are things that need to be changed. After all, we're causing ourselves suffering. And if we couldn't change that, the Buddha wouldn't have bothered to teach us. As he said, skillful qualities can be developed, unskillful qualities can be abandoned. So we see where we're doing anything that's unskillful, that's causing problems. We realize we've got to change. We can't just say, well, that's just the way I am. That's the way I think, that's the way I speak. If it's causing a problem and you're really intent on the Dharma, you've got to change. The attitude, I am what I am, it may work for Popeye the sailor man. But Popeye's good for only one thing, fighting off the bad guys. And he doesn't do that all that well. The bad guys keep coming back. If you want to practice the Dharma, though, you want to be good at a wide range of things. The quality that the Buddha calls Vimangsa, and John Lee translates as circumspection. You look at what you do and say and think, and see, where is it causing problems? And how can I change the way I act and speak and think so I can avoid those problems? If you're not willing to change, you're not really practicing the Dharma. The Dharma is there for changing you, changing your mind, changing your actions, for your own benefit. After all, if you simply just put up with the suffering you're causing yourself, it's going to keep on coming. It's when you realize you've got to change. That's when the practice begins to take hold. <clears throat> 